And we're back and ready for our second winner's bracket match of the day here in Southeast Asian TI6 Regional Qualifier Play. Two of the four teams will go to the Seattle main event, or, or rather will travel to Seattle, one of them into the main event, the other with a shot to play their way through through the wild card. I'm Al D. I'm joined here by Gods. It's time for Warriors Gaming versus Execration. Winner will face Fnatic in the winner bracket finals. But you still have to punch your ticket all the way through the grand finals in a straight best of five gods to qualify. It's a tough road. Tough it's road. a long road. road, yeah. Only two days, but it's a lot of games. It's the thing, like you win this and Fnatic away, and it's like even if you get through Fnatic, you're not you're not you there to beat yet. Beat them again, and that time in a best of five yeah. if they make it back. Yeah. So, I guess the good news is if you make it through and you lose to Fnatic, you get another shot. So you know you're going to Seattle, but yep, at that point. Yeah, getting to Seattle. I mean for. Uh, any of these teams in this region, I mean, Fnatic, obviously, the expectation on them is that they get there. But for any of the other three teams, uh, Execration, WG, uh, as well as y Fries, like, just a trip there to play Wildcards is a huge accomplishment. So, thoughts on the draft as we see it develop Ooh. here, Gods. We do see that Terrorblade first phase ban again. So, this seems to be a emerging trend in Southeast Asia. I'm very interested to see if it transfers over to other regions. Yeah, very early... Invoker pick. The Void has been a top pick in the SEA region. It's often getting banned out in the, f the first stage, but the Invoker, great partner, of course, with the Void, but being prioritized this early on it is a hero with some vulnerabilities, even more so when you go for what is likely to be the Exalt build. They do not secure a support in Phase 1, and I mentioned that for Warriors Gaming because yesterday, I had, I've not seen too much of this team coming in the qualifiers, but Zaki has been playing like MMY. This guy was an absolute monster on the Lion uh, in particular. Uh, as Lion was getting first phase banned at times against the team later on in the day. Uh, feels like a real playmaking support, but they don't get any supports here in phase one, so I imagine that's what Execration will be looking to remove here heading into phase two. Yeah. Disruptor, obviously, versus the Tide, another likely ban. Take out some of those those pesky heroes. Like seeing the ET, I think that's a, a, a great pick that's underrated in some of these other regions. We see a few teams. I mean, Secret, one of the big ones who are playing it a lot. Like OG, of course, Crit. The, the big players pushing the metagame, but if you have a player who can play this hero, boy, is it, it powerful. So but they ban the Ember, so they actually do ban another core. Someone that Elder Titan is not particularly good at catching, nor is Tide. Yeah. It'd be a nice kind of fighting hero that can create space for the Invoker as well, like when he wants to maybe farm and split push lanes, Ember can go around and brawl a bit. But we'll see what Warriors Gaming go for it. instead. Juggle is a good pick into the Tide, I feel. It's good in the laning stage, good in the mid game. You can use Blade Fury against the Ravage. Omni Slash is good for bursting down the Tide. And there's the uh, the, t <laughs> the targeted ban on Execration. They've cheesed a few of the games in this tournament using the Meepo. Get the hell out of here, Abed. No Meepo for you. None of your bullshit. <laughs> but they do ban uh, the Earth Spirit here, so... I mean, it's surely it's got to be a Lion or a Disruptor. Yeah, I don't see why not. There we go. Lion, you mentioned it. So I mean, hell, get both if they're available. <laughs> and the I, I mean, just pick yeah. Disruptor. This is these, this is great for Warriors gaming. Yeah. Definitely well, a possibility. How do you think Execration will run the IO? Are we going to see a Bristleback, a Sven, just hmm. a pocket IO? I've seen them, yeah, do it Tony. with with big carries, but I've also seen them just use it as like kind of the, the I call it like like the Na Navi style, where it's just sitting behind a strong mid to secure his lane. Like they were doing like the Dream League, like the Dendi Quap and yes. just a, a casual Seneco IO duel. Wind Ranger sometimes, like just to make sure that mid hero has like a two v one lane or at least a two v two, and you've got the shared healing. So if it's a two v two, you share healing, you harass together, and then suddenly you're winning the lane. So I don't mind that option. It, Invoker a hero who is doesn't really fight well into two heroes mid, doesn't really want to fight at all. He just wants to sit there farming. That's definitely a, a possibility. I think Warriors Gaming seeing this. This is where like bounty hunter type heroes become quite strong. As far as being able to help out that mid lane a bit and just find the IO, bring him down. Ricky's still in the pool as well. Clinks is actually one of the. I mean, as far as carries go, Clinks Weaver, like these annoying heroes that can get to the back lines, invis oh, past. I like I like Clinks a lot. It's also really good with Chrono. Yeah. And their Dire helps them take Roche, Natural Deso Builder, can get the early uh, Orb as well. So so versus Ty. I mean, Ty just so tanky blocks a lot of physical damage. Hmm. Three strength heroes. A core Timber. Or I guess Void can safe lane. All the Timber saw can safe lane. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it could go either way. It really depends on the matchup, I guess, that you're expecting. I mean, Tide, Tide does not enjoy <laughs> laning against Timber, and it yes. is going to be Tiny Io. Well, it's another another strength hero against Timbersaw. That's, That's the worry. Yeah, you see Timbersaw, you pick an additional strength hero because you think that you can beat it. <laughs> I know how this ends, LD, I think. You die to the basketball Ten with blades. A very bloody mess. Oof. This is going to be worse than that game seven. Yeah, I think once you see that Timbersaw, you maybe need to reconsider the, the tiny pick if that's what you had in mind. Had a different direction, but hey, we'll see. WG, uh, they're gonna be gonna be happy about what they've set up here. Jug ban last, and yeah, I mean, you just you, there's no reason not to ban Disruptor with this draft. He's just way too good against what they have. Yes, totally Shuts agree. down Tide, great against IO. Fits everything else they're looking to do, so they'll have to get something different. But Execration, I feel like they're the team with more holes to fill here. What do you grab? Uh, they want some more damage output with the t like the tide isn't going to offer much and tiny takes a few items to come online so they like want something that comes online quickly jug was banned so what what would that be gyrocopter type hero could work uh, they could go for the clinks I don't like that clinks versus timber Soul doesn't sound too great but uh, and burst damage against timber Soul is always something you want to have as well like, I think I, I love anti major as timber Soul. I don't think this is a yeah, it's like a... It's a so-so AM game, but they'll have one pick to yeah. kind of lock him down a bit further. It doesn't... When you've got Io Tiny, you want to have, like, this... You want to have a carry that can kind of fight as well, where you have the Tide ET plus one going around the map and Io Tiny relocate in. So perhaps something with a uh, catch and init something with it which initiates, uh, and then you have the Io Tiny follow it up, since Tide ET aren't really the best initiators. Normally that'd be like an axe or something, maybe even. Yeah, don't know if that's enough damage. Like it's kind of hard. Some kind of blink initiating carry like with your damage wraith that comes online early. Great king or uh, all right, let's look at our hero Sven. Things. Sven. Sven, is Sven feels greedy though. Yeah, if you, I guess I if, if you go Sven, then it's got to be like the tiny just blink rush, no no eggs or anything like that. Mm. Sand king. That's not maybe not yeah. enough damage. Slardar. Slaughter sounds good. Yeah, that works. It's kind of five idea. strength heroes against Timber. So I mean, hell, yeah. you've already got four. Let's just complete the. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a tough pick. Really tough pick here. I think basically what we're saying is there is no great solution. No. There are options. Maybe Queen. It's damage out. That is damage output. So and it's nice because they've diversified to some magic damage against Timber. Magic burst damage against Timber Soul. And an Orchid Carrier as yeah. well. So I think Warriors Gaming maybe this is where they get yeah. a defensive support. And we talk about burst against Timbersaw, you also want that against Void, so you can prevent the time or kill him fast. What do you pick here? Support. Dazzle, uh, Oracle, uh, some sort of defensive hero. Um, I mean, Timbersaw and Void are somewhat self-sustainable. You don't think you have to go defensive. Maybe Avenge to secure your Roche taking potential. Oh, and then you've got Swap Save, but remaining. I like Venge. Yeah, personally. that sounds good. Witch doctor. Shock does. A great against the against IO. IO tiny, yeah. So... That's that'll do the that'll do the job as far as giving them some pseudo ways of dealing with Io Tiny and all right. Do you do you give Execration a good shot here, Gods? Uh I I think they can outplay WG Unity by all means. This is a team that very much relies on individual players. They've got some very flashy players, some yeah, like kind of youngsters as far as the Filipino scene goes, Nando and Abed, and then they've got the veteran captain and Kimo. So this is very much a team that can make it maybe make what looks like a slightly disadvantageous draft work and just by executing really well and having individual players step up this them more than anyone else in this qualifier that's left i feel relies on individual players to kind of have some star performances now they did beat white fries the last time they played and they beat them rather uh quickly only 34 minutes to take the win there it was uh, an eight one and six showing from the abed invoker who basically went off on them by all accounts. Okay. He will be your your uh, tiny this time, so. Also here they can definitely snowball and take over if he gets enough help. WG Unity on the other side, more of the, the team fight lineup. I mean I guess with the tide quap potentially we see both teams looking to five V five a lot. Could be a very action packed game. Yeah, the early TP smoke. Zach you'll get the ward down and See how things progress here. This is yeah. just going to help a bit against that Io Tiny mid. 
Yeah, Saw Chuan is the guy who started doing it at Manila Major, and yeah. uh, it's now it seems everyone's picked up on it and started copying it. Yeah, all the, the smoke becoming 50 gold, TP's becoming 50 gold. It means it's like it's the gold investment is getting smaller and smaller to do this. And if this you get a good Hell Ward like this against an IO or any yeah. sort of rotating support, it could just win you the laning stage. And it's just the, the the smoke cooldown is what you really is what you're really investing, but often your most lineups don't need smokes in the first ten minutes anyway, so you end up having your three smokes uh, again very early on. So with that we're gonna head out to the lanes here. We'll see what the teams have cooking up. RR are gonna be in the off lane tied. They will have an observer ward to scout out his poles. They're running the tiny IO mid. Uh, Nando gonna be a safe lane Queen of Pain. Kind of uh, secret esque back when the previous roster, uh, pre-TI5, was doing really well. WG Unity on the flip side. Looks like a Void offlane, Invoker mid. Starting Quas Invoker. Do you see Quas Wex on the cards for Nana? Ooh, this draft. Um, Most people would assume Exort with the, the Void yeah, pick. Yeah, I, I did not see it in the cards, but... The there's a chance anyway. Against so Io Tiny. The rune spawns. There's a stun onto Nando. The cast will bounce back to him. He may not die here, but he'll take a lot of damage. Kimo gets off a stomp, not forced to run. But it's uh, at least one bounty rune for Execration. Ajit just got one freely in the top lane, though. So a nice win there to start the lanes for yep. Warriors Gaming. I think as far as the Invoker goes, it's perhaps going to consider the Quaswex purely because Exo Invoker may just end up feeding an Io Tiny. Uh, if you're not gonna, it kind of signals that he might not get too much support here. They're gonna give the support to the off lane voids to run like a dual lane setup in both top and bottom. So if you want to fight in lane against Iotani, Quasworks is the only way to do that. Yeah, the cool thing is they have that Timber versus Tide matchup, so Timber should basically be able to free farm here. So they'll have a core farming top, a core farming bottom, and uh, an Invoker getting his levels mid. But I guess the cost being that Invoker may not see us too much. Already, Tim's gonna start the stack for you, stack shenanigans off in the jungle. There is a ward here. It'll keep eyes on him moving from the mid lane. So very quickly, Warriors Gaming are gonna realize there are stacks in the woods to be found. Something Timbersaw could potentially steal yep. later on. God, these freaking predictions keep popping up. What's going? <laughs> this is why I don't have a oh compendium my gosh. on the account I'm casting, bro. Please. <laughs> They kept like updating like as any anytime someone overtook the top net worth, I'm like, I don't care about the top net worth, it's a minute and a half into the game. Please follow the man when is playing aggressively. Yeah. He's gonna walk into a stomp though. A lot of damage from chemo. We'll time walk some of it off. We'll be an Exod invoker, so he does go commit to the better build for kinda comboing with their drop, but it's gonna be a very volatile mid lane for him. Normally, Fire. this is around the time where Tiny Io will go for a kill on an Invoker. Yeah. Uh, especially with that build. You'll just see, like, the toss the Io forward, get the tether slow, then just run in, avalanche him, and, and go for the kill. So far, hasn't made the play just yet, but now that they've, they've got the bottle with the shared regen, they can kind of afford to go in and just get him low, and then you've got a, a round two. And there's a boots advantage here, with Invoker already having atrocious base move speed, 280. Yeah. yeah, they're they're about ready to jump. I think Io's sitting back to get the tether in, so Avalanche into a toss back. Oh, they go for the, the tether forward, now they get the slow. Henny onto the toss. Get dunked, Nana, they say, but he drops the ice wall! It ain't gonna matter. Abed, with the very long range, final right click, secures the kill. I mean, that was very predictable. Yes, but they only just got it. That last tiny right click, he wouldn't be able to get any more off with the ice wall. Io, I don't think, had the kill by himself, so... He did commit the Fairy Fire, unfortunately, so next yeah. time he'll be a bit easier to kill. And now Tiny's gonna be level 4, level 5, so the combo is heating up. Yep. Io, Bottle Crowing, but that's not too... It really means the Tiny as well as Bottle Crowing, since this is shared regen between these two, so... I mean, Invoker's probably gonna die a couple more times if he doesn't get help, so I guess the question for me is, do you think they're getting enough elsewhere to justify this? Or do, should they be considering sending help for the mid lane? Uh, it's it's good R is actually contesting the lane since he can get farm in the lane and this 1v2 setup is tied. But Queen is by no means dominating bottom. Wen has a ton of farm on Void, 13 CS already, so I, I don't think they are getting much elsewhere. I think Execration as a whole lane stage is uh, going very well for them. Yeah, a team that ha is very uh, unconventional with some of their pocket picks by most team standards. But... 
pulling out the IO here. We saw the Meepo, obviously, earlier in the tournament as their other big cheese, though. It's not that cheesy when they're willing to run it pretty much any game, I suppose, but definitely unconventional. But looking solid here in the opening moment. Bottom river. So if they find Afu. Yeah. We'll go for the TP out. The cask. Not going to bounce that one extra time to Nando. If it did, he may have lived. Yeah. They'll leave the rune for the, the IO, it looks like, who has used up a bit of his regen already, but this treads tiny at mid is... Ah, uh, you know what the counter to tiny IO has got? It's the counter to everything. <laughs> <laughs> An infused raindrop. Nice. That's actually... With no oh. boots, I wonder if he lives, though. Hmm. So they're going to be able to right-click him a bunch. Yeah, he's got the boots money now. And he's he's sitting on the ice wall, though. Might need to. I think you just, yeah, do just this. Just spam your nukes. Just yeah. try and break the raindrops as fast. They're not actually looking for a kill here. Yeah, raindrops. What an item. No, okay, no, maybe they are fine. He's tanky through this. And now he's... Another raindrops. They're absolutely fine. They're breaking the raindrops slowly, though. This will be gone. <laughs> he's going to have another one. raindrop. Jeez. Lol. New target now, but no mana for a toss. What an item. He literally went from, like, absolute food to unkillable god yeah. after spending 200 gold. It's 200 gold that will, I don't know, not really down the drain. If it saves your life, it saves you 200 gold. He so. did have to use a bunch of charges, but hey, Queen of Pain even rotated for that. Yep. So that opens up the bottom lane void now. Well ahead of her in CS. Chemo getting caught out a bit here. Should be okay, though. Nando's chasing, though. This bottom lane could be, I don't know, can look to cancel this out, but not successful. Well, I'm sure not as happy, at least, that he doesn't die there. He now has the boots coming out. Soul Rain ready for Ajit. Lanes are stabilizing a bit here, Guts. Yeah. And we're kind of getting to that point where they want to keep killing this Invoker. They may need some more levels on Tiny, get like the level 7 or so. He may just forego the pressure and just go jungle farm a bit, farm his stacks up, help get the IO level 6. They'll look for one last stack here, and I think it is about time they just try and take this big camp. Yeah, it's a That's big old stack. stack. Four stack. Not bad. Oh, five stack. Five stack. One, two. No, it's, four. No, it's a four, four stack. Yeah. Double troll. Yeah, that's a lot of gold. So, do you expect a blink dagger from Abed? Is that the build this game? Or do you uh, think he considers the straight eggs or even a drums? I like the blink. Just having the. being able to kind of snowball, be an initiator for now, and then transition into D DPS items after that. It does slow down your carry items a little bit, but if you get if you get your team some momentum, get them a couple kills, it's well worth it. It pays off. Man, Warriors gaming are crushing in the experience department. Yep. Yep. It's the tide hunter is getting his levels. Where are they falling so far behind? Ah. Uh, so just the denies. I guess the, the timber supports are all level four. Void. The Queen of Pain is the underleveled one. It looks like just because of that rotation mid, yeah. I guess. Queen is level five, while Timbersaw is level seven. It's I mean, Queen's about to hit six, I guess, but... I guess they haven't been getting their pulls off as much in the safe lane. That must be the difference. But, as I say, that Execration are about to kill a big stack, so they will catch up a bit here with that. Yeah. And here's the, the level seven, as mentioned, for the Tiny. The kill potential dramatically increases with this, but... Raindrop still, as we've seen, good item to stop those kills from happening. And without the bottle charges, they may not be the sustain for Abed to really... You really want to. You really want to try and kill Nana before he gets uh, the Midas, though. Yeah. Well, because once he gets that, he can afford the occasional death and still be a relevant hero. Yeah, he can kind of just rotate it and become a jungler as well. If once he feels like he's under yeah. too much pressure. Give the lane to the the witch doctor, potentially the lion. Speaking of the witch doc, or uh, speaking of the supports, Zaki. Looking good here as far as levels goes. He's at level five, well ahead of the other Titan, right up there with the Io. Basically, freely pulling the lane, so it's going to be a very quick finger. And against the IO, that is a powerful tool to have. Yeah, very, very nice. And see what the next move is going to be. It does feel like Execration have the cards to make plays now. They've got Nando on Quap, who's level six, so you can see TP rotations there. Uh, the uh, Tiny just has a huge amount of damage output, being level seven. Tide Ravage about to come online as well, so they've got a lot of tools to take. Team fights and go for aggressive plays. Get the catapult. Uh oh, Abed. Eh, he'll be okay with the tether. Even if he gets the combo, I, I, I really don't think they can kill him with the raindrops. 
I think it's worth just spamming toss at the invoker to break just the raindrops. Yeah. Just toss a creep Actually, onto him. It's I totally agree. Two tosses. It's very short cooldown, and raindrops are gone. I, I'm How much have they run? Do you know, have they been running much tiny IO? Uh, not the games I've seen, but they, they maybe have a bit. There we go. He, he uses a toss. He breaks one raindrop. There's one left. That's that's how you that's how you verse this in invoker mid. I mean, I think in the old in the old days we would see the the spam. Oh, as we missed a quick paint kill bottom. That was our first Chronosphere yes. deployed. Chronosphere, Sunstrike, and nice kill. Yeah, Queen so of Pain down. Voker grabs that, closes in on the Midas. Meanwhile, Ajit creeping, skipping the creep camps as well, or the creep waves top, I should say. So things are looking really good here for Warriors Gaming Gods after uh, what looked to be a, a potentially overly greedy start. They have found the solution. Yeah, and now they've got the ability to make plays, start getting the Invoker not active so much, but get him kills through the sun, the Sunstrike setup with the Chronosphere, the Lion, once he can start roaming around, and he can just go jungle. Nana, very close to Midas, doesn't even want to mess around in this mid lane because of the threat to his life, is just going to say, I'm going full jungle mode, and with the Witch Doctor mid, there's, he's kind of like the prey where... If you want to go for an easy kill, you're going to go on the Witch Doctor. It's unlikely you make a full rotation into the Dire Jungle at this stage. Bit worried about this Queen of Pain of a Mexicration. Yeah. Dying wants TP mid, not finding a kill, under leveled, under farmed. Bit of an odd pick this game, I feel, too. It gives him burst damage, but it's a hero that just doesn't really feel like does like like she does enough in the current meta game. This always seems to be better carry options. Even when you're looking for that kind of semi carry snowball type hero. I, I just don't feel like Queen of Pain actually snowballs ever. When's the last time uh, you've seen like a, a Queen of Pain really take a game over? I guess CTY at Shanghai, maybe. Yeah, that could could well be. Oh, yeah, okay. the CTY days. Long behind us. Well, they managed to kill the Void, not letting him get the time walk off. It was a well executed relocate gank, first of the game, and they leave Tiny bottom, so it looks like they want to take the C1 tower. There's the Blink Dagger reveal. Finds the Witch Doctor. Hey, Nando, Abed man. Sneaking into the trees, then popping back out. And we'll collect that. And WG have smoked up. They have Void respawning with Chronosphere. Oh, this could get ugly. Can Abed's Abed low. blink away they fast don't enough? don't have a relocate out. They're going to tether. Oh, he's going to be Tim's healed up soon. Gets out of there just in the nick of time, perhaps. Then Strike not going to connect. They get eyes out with the Astral Spirit, and they will retreat successfully. Yeah. I mean, Abed just got a second life thanks to that IO, and. Ara himself ready to kind of rotate in with Ravage, has level 8 TP scroll, but would have to TP and waddle his way into the fight, something that WG may not just allow happen. So as we hit the 11 minute mark gods, uh, Execration with that Blink Dagger reveal, out to a bit of a gold lead experience going the Warriors Gaming. Alright you guys, we are back! Back like Navi. And uh, we'll get LD back in just a second, he's just uh, on some of the issues that are going on, but we'll uh, hop right back into this game, Execration. Since leaving, okay. uh, it looks like have taken a bit more map control. Get our bearings of where exactly things stand here, and uh, uh, apologies for that, folks. Not sure what happened. Looks like uh, we had a bit of an internet hiccup, but we are back. Hopefully, we'll stay that way. So, recapping the state of the game, it's still relatively even here, 18 to 12, the score, around 22 minutes in. How's our timber sword? Has he died? How many bloodstone charges? 22. 22. Oh, and with sh okay, this is actually this is timber saw versus four strength heroes, and and he's loving it. Strength heroes who don't really get BKB. Tiny hero has to go BKB at some point, but if you go Axe BKB, you do not hit very hard. You're not going to be able to kill Timber. Yeah. I don't, maybe with the Orchid and the Quapult and the Ravage, but Whew. once he gets his next item or two, it's not going to be good enough anymore. Killing Timber this game is very difficult. Tiny gets an Echo Saber. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, right, all right, with this item, but uh, smoke play coming out from WG now. They're looking to get on the move and keep on fighting anytime they have Chronosphere. Can set up kills off of this, and rather than just sit back and wait for Execration to come gank them, then relocate in, they're going to be the ones who want to go on the aggressive. Ooh, ET scouts them though. 
And he'll know that he hit heroes once that spirit comes back. He's going to get some bonus damage. He's going to be like, hey, what happened here? Hey, guys, I'm hitting way too hard. Yeah. This is a problem. I, don't, I think it makes the animation sounds too, even when it hits them in smoke, but I'm not mm. entirely sure. I'm not sure how I'm that not sure. spirit I know, works, like, some things like Radiant Spurn you do not see, but yes, not sure about the spirit. I think the spirit maybe you do, but you definitely notice when it comes. Well, you can notice if you're being attentive. So, uh, bit of a, it does feel like this game's. This is a stage where things will slow down a bit. Uh, Execration will probably just respect the fact Timbersaw is a beast they don't want to fight into, and for WG, they haven't quite got the same mobility as a IO relocate draft to really get too aggressive on the map outside of when they can find smoke opportunities. And even then, it's like they smoke up, they don't find anyone, they've got to back off and continue farming. So, looking long term, do we do you see this game just slowly tipping one way or the other? Is it still execution based for you gods? It is, but I think it does tip towards the Malaysian squad. WG Unity are going to scale better with their three cores. Invoker um, has no problems going late game. The BKBs will become the key item to deal with Timbersaw and Invoker, it's great against both these heroes, but the Chronosphere is there, you've got Lying with a Blink Hex. They you've got ways to uh, stop it. looking for more relocate coming through. Working on Nana, the Echo Saber, working its magic, but they don't have the follow-up to continue engaging. I will relocate back. Tim's now TP into the top lane. They want to continue this fight, because Void is coming. When moving in, drops the Chrono. They do have a finger, but a great Elder Titan stomp is going to prevent that. Doesn't matter. They have the magic damage to bring him down. At the same time, though, Abed. Finding the kill on the backside will kill off the line. Looking for more. They silence up Wet. They now scream him and they go to work. Tiny getting free reign in the back lines. And with the help of that spirit, they're able to discombobulate the fight. And find the two for one. Yeah, Timbersaw is just going to try to hide himself in the trees. He does not have a TP. 27 seconds. It's a long time. <gasps> they're hugging. They're kissing. Oh, and they're not. Oh, he's going to. Ooh, Ajit doesn't want to kiss. He's, they're pinging up. They must realize he TP'd in because they are pinging like mad. Find him. Tim's is the new hunter seeker. Oh, no, he pops oh, out. You thought you were safe. You were very wrong. He does, he does get the Shiva's guard off, but do they have the follow-up damage to finish the job? One more auto attack. Bam. Oh, huge it's kill. It's clubbing time. 730 gold to the hero that was already top of the net worth chart. 3k gold suddenly for Abed. That is a big pick off, a big kill. It's an insta respawn for Timbersaw, but you're, t you're starting to take away the Bloodstone charges, and it's a big gold ingest going Tiny's way. Makes it now a 4k gold lead for Execration, who continue to just, it feels, uh, outmaneuver for his game in the fights. Now, Cody Ravage bottom on to Nana. The relocate comes through. <laughs> Deleted. Whew. Kill after kill. This uh. Invoker is not having much fun. Seven deaths. And you thought that Ooh. you thought that Tiny Io was dead. Uh, you were wrong. It's, it's still a thing, apparently. Echo Saber. Whew, good item. I've heard some plays, uh, Fog being one of them, he's like, man, this item needs a nerf. And we're seeing part of the power of it here from Abed's Tiny. And they're going to get towers and objectives now, slowly. Well, not that slowly. Not with an Ag's Tiny. Moving on towards bottom. There's so an Avalanche on that catches out when. And now getting off the mech. RR runs in circles. Just trying to stall here. May just accept his fate, but Nando comes in from the rear. He wanted to snipe Zaki, but Zaki a bit too close to the tower. It'd be risky to maneuver in. As Wen has a blink dagger soon. They could continue chase. They can pursue Nando. Do they go for it? No. Uh, it seems he will escape. Yeah, we'll just still hunt around a bit, but doesn't look like he'll catch anyone with a chrono. So just the tide kill. Execration, happy to probably just slow things down, reset, wait for the next relocate. Wait for Tiny to pick up that Next item, looks like an AC will be his selection. And he's only 1,000 gold short of it, so... Could become a big, scary problem to deal with for WG Unity. And then you've got not just... I, mean, I think the carry and fighting potential of the Tiny is still going to be somewhat limited because of not having a BKB into Invoker and Timbersaw, but what this IO Tiny has with the AC is a tremendous amount of split push. There's always, always that threat of just... Taking a lane of racks very quickly if you're not ready to defend it. And WG Unity, if they blow the Chrono, uh, if they don't have that for a high ground defense, I don't know if they can hold that easily. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I think it entirely becomes down to the Timbersaw, who have a lot of pressure on him to perhaps finish an Ag Scepter soon, so he has the double Chakram to defend with. 
there. And yeah, late game, Tiny may struggle a bit without a BKB if they're all able to focus him, but if you have the relocate save or he's got an Aegis to work with, he is a very tanky hero to the point that like you're not going to burst a Tiny down yeah. that quickly at this stage. Later on, perhaps. But I don't think they can easily do it right now. And the other big tool execration have is yet yeah, bursting the Timber Souls hard, but Earth Split are one of those spells that scales very well being percent-based damage into the late game. You're going to take away 50% of a hero's hit points. Just like that. Having a scout towards the pit. Warriors game in Unity. They don't want to get caught out by surprise. Execration with the Tiny have some Roshan taking potential, albeit otherwise not the best lineup for doing so. Yeah. Looks like they'll just... I mean, you see the IO Tiny top, it doesn't really tell you all that much because these heroes can instantly be at the Rosh pit again. So All it's going to take is one catch and potentially we see Execration Looking to take a fight around this pit. They smoke up. They want to go. Oh, it's a five hero smoke with that relocate as the spirit returns. Chemo, he's got an eyes on heroes moving in. In fact, he knows. Warriors Gaming are in position. Void blinks to the left. He finds Nando. Locks him down to start the fight. The Ravage is there on the backside, though. It found the entire intercepting force. They will get the Queen of Paid kill, courtesy of the finger. Tiny gets thrown up in the air. He's already brought down one, though. Can Ajit finish this IO? Tim's will fall, and it's trouble now for Abed, who's got to back away. Chain forward, a very short range one. Invoker blinking into Abed, controlled. Cold snap, he needs that IO support. He doesn't have it, and they likely lose him too. A fight right back the other way. Warriors gaming, ending a mega kill streak. Cleaning up four, and turning this game right on its head. Yeah, just the ability to instantly burst down the IO meant so much. Witch Doctor got off a full duration Death Ward, killing off the ET. Everyone just landed their spells in some fashion. Yeah, Wen doesn't get a... hits a one-man chrono, but the hero he chronos dies to the finger. The hero that the Witch Doctor uses the Death Ward on dies to the Death Ward. So everybody who landed their sp spells got one one kill. It was like, one hero gets one, another hero gets another, and everything just worked out great. Once the Io's down, the Tiny without the Io is actually not all that scary, and without his little tether buddy, that Tiny got dealt with easily at the end of the fight. Yeah, so now you have an Aghanim Scepter up on the Invoker, uh, BKB on the Void, uh, Timber Saw very close to his next item, and we might see the double boots of travel soon for this team, Gods, just to be able to match the mobility the IO brings to bear. Oh, this Timber Saw is so big and scary. I feel like the e Timber Saw with equal net worth to the Tiny is actually scarier than the Tiny, at least in a kind of standalone setting. With the IO plus Tiny is scarier than the Timber Saw or the Timber Saw plus one, but. I'd I, if there wasn't an eye in this game, I'd be like, man, Timbersaw is actually like a scarier hero than Tiny. Timbersaw has definitely been a scarier hero as of, as of late in this patch. Yep. And it doesn't feel like they're going to have ways of dealing with him as this game drags. Like, if anything, he just gets harder and harder to kill later on, so... Well, it looks like WG ready, but Execration haven't said the word go just yet. They say, go, go, we go, you go, everyone goes. We're underway again, 24 to 18 the score, 31 minutes, with Boots of Travel now online for the Invoker. Mm -hmm. Nana gains some mobility. Timbersaw opts to skip his for now, though, God's grabbing a BKB. Okay. And if BKB was mandatory for Tiny, I don't know that it was mandatory for Ajit, but he becomes virtually immortal at this stage. He is damn near impossible to kill. You can't use the Orchid as a tool against him. He can dodge the Ravage or at least prevent a Ravage coming out onto him. You have to somehow combo Avatos with Ravage with all the Quap nukes. And then you maybe bring him down to a quarter HP. It's a lot of ifs. And then if you don't kill him, the fight completely turns around. Well, now we see Awkward. momentum swinging back the way of WG. They've got the gold advantage. They are the ones pressuring towers. An execration almost need to resort to the split push tile style play. Tiny's already in the mid lane. Ayo's just gonna be sitting behind, ready to relocate, save him should he be needed. But nice ambush here. Oh, stop! Gonna cancel not yeah. as TP. That's a bit unfortunate. And RR moving into position. He's gonna ravage two, and now they look for the relocate follow up. They're gonna chuck that invoker right back. Ajit popping the BKB, but he gets hit by the Earth Splitter. Slowed down. Engaging with the Shivas, a 2v5. If ever there was a time for Execration to win a fight, this would be it. RDA just down. Now the BKB committed by Nando. Still Ajit, very healthy. Gets tossed back 
but in comes the Chrono. It's going to find the Tiny. Over the top, the Queen of Pain ult goes. Can they focus Abed down? It looks like they will be able to. Cold Snap's there. It's enough. The Rock has been slain. They've lost no real heroes, only an Aegis. And they do march forward. Well, it's a big victory for WG. Did and that was like the dream setup, too. You cancel a TP, you pop the Aegis to start the fight, Yep. and then they just didn't have to follow up. The inst uh, on Aegis respawn, the Invoker got instantly silenced, but Nana blinked away while silenced. There was no damage dealt to Nana, so the blink back pulled Execration deeper away and basically baited them into that, that Chronosphere. That Chronosphere completely caught the Tiny out, and from there, there was Tiny had no way of really fighting. The Io couldn't get to him, and Execration in trouble here in game number one. And that was basically it at that point. So, can they force anything here? Ravage is down, Queen of Pain ult's down, Earth Splitter's down. Yeah, it seems at least a tier two will be in the cards for yeah. Warriors Gaming. Even without the Aegis on Nana, I think likely we see them press forward. No Chronosphere for a little bit as well, but the amount of farm on some of these heroes, the threat of the Timbersaw with his BKB back up is just so potent. It's been quite the run for the Warriors. They continue it now. Nana getting silenced, but Zaki there, ready to go with the quick draw. Hex into a stun. He does have a finger available. Hanging onto it for now. The he cast. could kill off Tim's, but the cast. Oh! <gasps> the opts Tim's. not to get him. Gets stomped by the Elder Titan. They will make it out. Sunstrike. Ooh, almost catches him. Yeah, I think somehow he thought that Timber Chain was. If he had Blink up, he could have thrown the Timber Chain, blinked forward, and gone through the Io, which looked to be the play he was trying to make, but. I believe his blink was just slightly on cooldown. When's gonna be KP? Play it safe. Tiny's onto him. Gets the Echo Saber doubles, double attack off. Now uh, retreating with the time dilation, but an EMP tornado comes through. And then over the top, Nando with the blink. Zaki there to counter with the stun, but it's too late. Nando's already found the kill. They're looking for a bit more. Again, the Echo Saber coming into play. Zaki too will fall. Such two a back down. and forth between these two. Yeah. Counter punch for punch. Blow for blow. It is. Reflected in the graph as well. You can see a lot of peaks and valleys here. Execration. They could look to continue to press forward. They've got Sonic Wave and Ravage both back up in 15 seconds time. And it's now an Arcane Rune on the Queen of Pain as well. To make those cooldowns even shorter. Right now, looking at a 28 oh. second cooldown on the Sonic Wave. There's a buyback on Faceless Void, but that's something Execration would love to force out. Ravage is available. Chrono also online when the Void does respawn. Warriors Gaming, suddenly their base under siege. They're going to nuke RR. EMP Tornado crashing through. The timing's not quite right, though. RR doesn't lose the mana. And now Nando just walking away. Can they focus anyone down? The Void's got to buy back for this. He finds Nando, but he's looking for more. Does he get a bash on Chemo? Not going to happen. Abed on the run as well. Zaki trying to find the Io. They lock him down. Glimmer Cape onto Abed. They do have eyes on him, but the Io's the one they want first. They're going to get him. And now the chase. Ghost Walk. Move forward. Doesn't have a blink. Doesn't have a way out. The avalanche comes through, but it th goes right past Nana. Sprints his way through it. Finger committed. Right back the other way. Warriors gaming. A buyback committed. But the base is held. And the push comes rolling back down mid. Yeah, the, the chase potential for WG just meant that once the, the voided bought back, Execration were just kind of in a, a tough spot. They're not done yet, though. Behold the meatball. The deafening blast. Nice cracking shell, buddy, but it ain't going to be enough. Gem hits the deck. Nana picking up steam here. Really nicely played. And Doesn't have an inventory slot, though. You don't really want to be giving up a drum, so they'll probably send another hero to grab it. That will be when. Yeah. And there's nothing really to contest this. The push could now target this bottom tier 2 tower with the four heroes still dead and respawning. I think for Execration, the one play you could have considered there is just focusing the racks and just throwing a Ravage to just secure that Rax claim. Uh, the Tiny Io would have pushed so fast that the Tai could have almost just suicided in with a Ravage. Perhaps even lose the Io Tiny, but that ended up happening anyway, so... I think Execration may regret not just committing to a, a push there. When they try to back off and split up, they get caught out one by one. Warriors Gaming sieging this Tier 2. They will bring it down. So now all that stands between them and their first lane of Rax is a single tier 3 in each lane. But they haven't actually broken through just yet. They'll have to reset here. Next Roshan, at least two minutes away. Could be up to five. 
But they've also gotten some deep wards down, gods. We do see a nice network of vision that's emerged for Warriors Gaming over the past couple minutes. They've got a lot of vision on the map. They've got an Invoker, level 22, Aghanim Sept. We're going to see the Around the World Deafening Blast soon. And that's something which, again, Tiny doesn't have the tools to deal with until he has a BKB. This BKB is becoming a necessity for him at this stage of the game. Now you can see Abed has accepted it, but... Even now, it also feels like damage could be an issue for him. Almost worth disassembling the Echo Saber to get BKB, and then you have an item slot to get, like, a Moon Shard. Possibly. You need that extra attack speed, I guess. You can try and rely on the Io for the attack speed, but... That Io's gets harder as the game moves along. Yeah, Io's often going to get target, uh, targeted down, or you want to hide in the trees to use the relocate to save people. And if you're tethering, you can't reliably get that relocate save off. So Ajit has more on inbound. It's the Aghanim Scepter next for the ever-farming Timbersaw. Still on top of the Tiny. 11, 2, and 8. It's been quite the showing. Well, Execration need to somehow pull off a big team fight if they want to take this game. Timbersaw is just, his damage output is just absurd. This this hero, as far as just pure damage and fights, is unmatched. That's the BKB. I mean, it almost feels like they have to win fights now while they have a 10 second BKB. This thing gets low enough, you're not bursting Timber. Yep. He's still got, I guess, one more item slot if he wants to get rid of the blink. But with his BKB, he's basically immortal, so... Has hit this nice timing where it's like late, very late in the game when he finally buys it, so he has 10 second BKB at, a, at the late game stage, but it, it does feel like Execration have also missed their timing. They're the ones on the back foot now. You want to have the BKB when you're at one of your kind of peaks. And that was feels like maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. As a result, WG Unity are happy to perhaps just Bide their time, wait for another Roshan if they really want. Oh, uh, hello, Zaki. He doesn't want him, though. Abed's not the choice. It's Tim's. But Tim's, that's where I like to hide. Those are my trees, friend. Zaki gets scared and he'll run away. Yeah. Tim's kind of slow to really react to that. <laughs> hey, Lion. Oh, shit. I, I should probably Glimmer Cape and run. Yeah, it was, it was one of those scenarios where like you realize Zaki's alone, but you're also like, wait, his friends are probably nearby or ready to come in. Cause and you see him running, you're like, oh, I'm fine. Oh, wait a second. He might come back <laughs> with with numbers. So who do you favor here, gods? Numerically, Warriors Gaming pretty heavily on top. Yeah, and I think it's just going to continue in that way. Tiny's... Kind of uh, the the BKB is his last like last ditch effort in some ways to give his team a shot to take fights, but I think Io struggling too much to stay alive is always getting found by Timbersaw or Invoker or someone. Witch Doctor is always getting off these big casts in fights, and the cast has been a, a great tool. And that's one of the other big problems with having like these melee carries in the front line, like Tiny and Tide, is that it's just too easy for a Witch Doctor to just throw a cast Maledict and get these kills. So. I think Execration is just struggling to find a way to execute their team fight by not no poor play of their own part, but more just it's the the di difficulty to execute. Whereas WG just have a Timbersaw run in and throw all his spells and instantly heroes die. So now they have been imbued with the power of the Aegis. Double BOTs, quadruple blink, double force, an extremely mobile hit squad for Warriors Gaming. This Kimo has nearly been brought down up here in the top side of the map. First kill of the fight, gonna go the way of Ajit. They might be able to get the Tiny as well. Abed, oh, hope he relocated out. Goodbye, Tims. And say goodbye to your ball of light. Tiny's already like walking away to farm neutrals. Like, okay. Oh, he can't even try for the TP frame trick. See ya. Goodbye, little Io. We hardly knew ye. Initiation, on mid. Initiation with the quad bolt is enough. They get wow. the kill. They're going to look for Zaki here as well. Four staff blink. Gem down. He's out of there. Really but nice play. They don't even like bother with the orchid because they know he's a BKB. So they just make sure they do as much damage output as possible, and they burst him. Bit of a blunder there by Warriors Gaming and Void out of the game for a full minute. His buyback has just cooled down. But I don't know if he has the gold. 2,000. Yeah, he actually does if he needs to. But he's not going to. 
probably frustrating for WG because that was like a, a kill in, kill in the top at IO they would have liked to have perhaps pressed at least pressured the high ground, but with Void dead, not possible, and they're likely going to have to wait, despite having an Aegis, wait for the Void to come back. They need more of those, though. Yeah, and that, that pickup on the Void is, means a lot to Execration. It buys them so much time to whittle away at this Aegis duration. This breathing room for them. It's only three minutes left. But Nana's still pressing a bit. Again, not able to find that Tornado EMP timing. Seems to be struggling a bit. And now it. it's it's less about the the uh, tiny itemization, the Queen of Pain's progression. There's t still two item slots for Nando, uh, and as he, I think I just feel Queen of Pain is going to scale better going later in this game than Tiny. Tiny's the base breaker. He's the hero that you win a fight, you win the game off of him. But Queen of Pain's the one that's going to allow you to win team fights. And also the the more mobile hero is the, Io will not live forever, and then you're you're more reliant on Queen of Pain to clean up. It's like a, a scythe of vices, going to be at Nando's item choice top lane. Abed. Oh, if that sun strike hit would have been real scary. Might have forced out the BKB. And two minutes on this Aegis, and the push has not been able to come just yet. Four heroes are smoked up on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, creeps are pushing bottom. Creeps are pushing mid. Tiny. And Nana's pushing top, so they will have a good solid window here with a Tiny out in front. They know there's a defensive relocate, or at least that's what they assume. There's actually not! Io's at home! Oh no! Execration! This is a terrible way to lose the game. They have one buyback, but the Elder Titan will drop as well. They saw the Invoker top and that completely threw them off. They just somehow assumed the rest of WG Unity was going to be sitting behind the Invoker and... Tim's just wanted to go on a little shopping trip. Tiny's going to buy back. This could be their last stand. Void down, though. Out for 80 seconds. He already spent his gold buying the point booster. Does not have the money for buyback. Otherwise, I think you just buy back and go for the GG with no Ravage. But instead, they're going to lose Afu. They may lose more. Abed glimmering and chasing forward with Tim's behind him. Execration. Bit lucky there that the Void didn't have the buyback. Yeah. But they will definitely take it all the way to the bank. Couple of kills in quick succession, and gotta say this is a little sloppy for both teams. Now Nana trapped out. The Aegis still has about a minute left. It looks like he's gonna BKB. Frantically goes walking, and Timber joins the fray. But now the Aegis down. The BKB committed. They can go for round two here. Combo time. Tiny's ready. He gets his BKB up again. The Queen of Pain. Out. Nana popping the deafening blast and running frantically. He can't blink. He's dead to the club. And now it's just dodge it. Orc it up. Can they? They chase goes him? forward. Can they get a fourth? Blink. In and blink out. Even the lion getting in a bit too close there. We'll look for the TP out. But and caught. Abed cages him as well. Four heroes dead. And Aegis also chewed right through. This well. is some sloppy Dota gods. Yeah, and WG just kind of overextend their limits. It's one of those things where you're thinking Tiny's dead. Yeah, he's got a buyback, but let's force the buyback. But you need to force the buyback without getting caught in that Ravage. That was such a good initiation from Ara. Setting, it, setting things up to kill the Void at the start of the fight. And from there, I mean, WG Unity just did not have the numbers or the ability to fight into the tiny BKB. Yeah, it's where, to me, he either needs buyback or he's just got to be better positioned. They don't have a great defensive support to save him if he gets caught. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the next moves from these teams are going to be. Tiny does have to play around the lack of buyback for the next five minutes. Doesn't mean we'll probably see him purchase something, possibly to replace the Echo Saber. Get a Moon Shard or mm. Butterfly is the other possibility. And not that the evasion helps all that much. Butterfly just a pretty good DPS item for Tiny, though. There's still a little room to grow, but it's especially Nando. Probably a, a damage item to round things out, I imagine, after this town portal scroll uh, gets replaced by BOTs. Yeah, I guess. One damage item that's not like a like the unconventional damage item is the refresher because you've got the you get double hex, double BKB, and double sonic wave. So that to me is well, uh, not really an unconventional item, but that that to me is pro possibly the best damage item, even though it's yeah, not like a right click more, item. He's gone for more of the nuker build, no yeah. AC or MKB. Yeah, you can always upgrade the orchid now. Is the other nice thing about ah, yes, the orchid right. semi carries and whatnot. You can have this other big late game item. Yeah, Bloodthorn is pretty legit, especially against Timbersaw. 
28 Bloodstone charges again on Timbersaw. This is really big in the late game because it gives him effectively three lives. If he insta respawns, he can TP back in, he can then die again. Obviously, you're not planning on dying. If you die twice in a fight, you're probably not looking... You're giving up a lot of gold, but... It's that short respawn timer which gives you a bit more strategic value in the late game. Warriors gaming, smoking. Still, neither team able to claim their first lane of Rex. We're now 47 minutes in, only game one. It was a very quick uh, earlier series, a rather decisive performance, but this one looks like it will be a long haul for both teams. Warriors gaming unsuccessful in their quest for blood and kills will be deterred by good map awareness from execration. Yep. Nando even able to go bottom and split push. Just the one of the really nice things about the Ag Scepter is just that ability to spam out lanes. Yeah, it doesn't actually have a TP for eight seconds, but should be okay. Yep. Once the tower. <laughs> yeah, it is deniable, but that it's gold. unless he wants to come into BKB, it may not be possible. He's gonna hex and go for okay. He, nice See ya, buddy. Play. No tornado anymore. Yep. No way for Nana to stop that. Yeah, and you, you're not scared of a deafening blast since that doesn't cancel TPs anymore. You know, it's not often, God, that you'll see a Queen of Pain have a very underwhelming laning stage, uh, even an underwhelming mid game, and then come back in the late game, but that's exactly what's yeah. happening here. Nando is very close to the Invoker's net worth, right there with his own Tiny, and not too far off the Timber Saw. I mean, you mentioned it's going to be more about the Queen of Pain than the Tiny if they're going to win, and. Right now, Queen of Pain is right there with him. Looking looking just fine, and Tiny Daedalus is going to be his item. So he doesn't go for the attack speed option, the crit. The one kind of damage item that Tiny gets a lot of benefit from with his high base damage. And uh, yeah, Queen of Pain, I really... Hats off to Nando's. Played very well and recovered after a slightly slow start. Well, the one concern here for Execration, though, is the lack of vision. It just takes one good chrono. Secretion crawled their way back into this game, but they might be in danger here up top. Queen of Pain is the BKB. Blinks herself out. No chrono to lock him down. Sunstrike having a fish. Oh, BKB war Oh, boy. Was, they needed, well, didn't have the cold snap up, but needed vision. She went to get that one. Got to be careful. <laughs> Next time might not be so lucky. And they also have a Hex here on the Timber as well, mind you, so... Jeez, this guy's just pulling items out of nowhere. What did he replace? Uh, did you Didn't he have a... Did he have to replace something? He no. had a Shivers, no, he's... Bloodstone, then he got Shivers, then he got BKB, then he got Ags, anything Maybe else. he had yeah. Raindrops earlier or something. <laughs> the upgraded boots, oh, he's, he got that fairly late, the Boots of Travel as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, timber mostly done farming now. The OT2s are up. <laughs> Invoker a similar position, although has, hasn't has decided what that last item slot will be. Although typically you will just see the refresher there as well. Do you favor anything else this game? Or? Uh, no, I think you're going that ultra late game where BKBs get shorter and shorter. Tiny, okay, he's 9 seconds because you're not fighting, but at some point you're going to imagine that you're going to play towards a scenario where BKBs may get short, so... Whether your sixth item is refresher or your seventh, there should be a refresher in there somewhere. So you may as well. I I I figure buying it now is fine, and then if there's an item you want to replace it with, you can and just keep it in your stash. This game just feels like it get get weird real quick with uh, yes. so many boots of travel entering the field. The tiny IO, some big base race potential. The instant re respawn. Just about to say, it's a timber. Huge amount of farm on this tide. I, uh, it felt like. WG Unity were kind of slightly doing better in this current position, but then I look over at the net worth, and I'm like, Tide is 17k net worth? This is actually... Tide is one of the, like, the best late game heroes to have with the double Ravage, and it's exactly what we're going to see now in these upcoming fights. Oh, that dire scan, it wears off the second that Nando walks in, but already Roshan claimed Aegis Cheese will be grabbed. The Void gets the Aegis. That's a big pickup. Nana has been caught out. It's a complete air ball, though, from Wen, and he doesn't have an Aghanim Scepter. It's going to be a very low cooldown here on the Chronosphere. Still going to work on Abed, trying to bash him and focus him down. He tanks the Queen of Pain. Oh, time walks it off. 
will heal right back to full HP. And meanwhile, on the backside of the fight, they have managed to lock down the Timber Saw. They commit a Ravage for him, not doing too much with that Ravage. Nando in danger. Tim's already having used the relocate, unable to save his buddy. So now the Queen of Pain down. Everybody on the run. They just are not easily dealing with Ajit. 28 Bloodstone charges. Essentially a full HP Timber. Killing all the trees in front of him. He hates trees. He hates heroes. He wants this Elder Titan. Give me your stapler, he says. Now, throwing out the Chakram along with the Scythe of Ice. They control Chemo. They'll bring him down. A secondary Ravage. Tony coming in hot. Gets off some good auto attacks. Might be able to bring down Ajedi. Will respawning in 12 seconds. Nana forced to scramble. Back away. Round two of the fight. A whole lot sweeter for Execration. But they had to command an Elder Titan buyback. Still the stun coming through. Oh boy, oh Timber no. Saw's coming. I'll bet in danger. There's no relocate. They can focus him. There's the Hex. The chase moving forward. BOT in. Then the chain. They look for a bit more. They've got the detection. They lock him down. They finish him off. Out for 120. Time to buy back. Ooh. That was such an uncoordin uncoordinated team fight from Execration, especially. The blink in with the Hex had no follow up. The they Earth split and missed. They the committed ravage, one Ravage uh, on the Timber. I think it only hit the Timber yeah. on the south side of the fight there and as well. And his teammates were all to the north, no way nearby. And they tried to set up the Earth Splitter from ET entirely missed because the Io woke up the sleeping hero with a spirit accidentally. Like, everything that could go wrong went wrong for Execration. Every single, like, item and spell was poorly used that fight. And that was with a complete airball of a Chrono. But now Wen has the Aghanim Scepter, and it's back up. So we're looking at a kill every minute. Pretty much guaranteed, unless he airballs it again. RR will drop here. Now when he finds uh, a one hero Chrono once more, and there is a relocate available, but Chemo, that's a dieback. No Elder Titan for 80 seconds. Can Nando do it? Can this guy turn the fight around? Doesn't even have an ultimate. He gets bashed, focused by the Timber. No chance in hell. A dieback on the Queen of Pain. RR on the run. They want the Tiny too. Rocks will fall. Trees are no match. Execration don't have the answers. It's Warriors Gaming. Hook, line, and sinker. They wipe the floor with Execration in the one big fight they needed. They end this game with a 4,500 gold cherry on top, and they are now out to a 1-0 advantage in the best of three. And one of those games that just comes down to that one deciding team fight, if we can call it that, but that's one of those fights that you, if you're Execration, you'd like to play that one over and just have a, have a redo. They completely fumbled it. The Queen of Pain with that Blink Hex initiation with no teammates inside. The Tiny tries to follow up with his Blink in, but they're not going to kill... Like, the Tiny didn't even go for the Invoker for one thing. It wasn't an instant follow-up. He went for the Void who had Aegis, so there was no real clear strategy and approach to that fight that was going to work for them, so... Yeah. It was, uh, up until then, it was really solid from Execration. They looked good. The individual play from, uh, from Nando from Abed was solid, but... Hey... WG won the fight that mattered. I mean, that's really been the story for me and the qualifiers of WG is uh, they, they draft solidly, but it's more their execution late game where they, they don't tend to throw games. Like, yeah, they'll get caught out sometimes. Maybe they miss a spell or two, but they don't completely crumble as a team. And with this type of draft, you just needed one good fight to take it. Yeah, they found that good fight. Well, they found it. They now lead 1-0 in the best of three. Winner will play Fnatic in the winner bracket finals. The loser drops down to face White Fries, HYHY, and Friends. So who's it going to be? We'll find out when we come back for game two. Stick around. You're watching the TI6 qualifiers.